Hi everyone! Today I'd like to show you the mechanical part of my solar tracker. If you haven't seen the video about the electronics, then click the link here. Oh wait, there. And view that first, and then come back and see the mechanics. So I will now show the mechanics. So let me give you a tour of how it works. The vertical motion is powered by this linear actuator I made. I made this mount so the spindle will be always in the center of the rotation point. This is just another hinge with a piece of transparent PVC pipe. And I used transparent PVC because then you can see what's happening inside, which always makes it more interesting of course. And the spindle and the nut that I glued inside here is donated to me by Machinefabriek Harderwijk. So a special thanks to those guys. And I've grinded the square to the end of the spindle so it would fit nicely into the socket. And with this spindle, this movement can reach just under 90 degrees, but uh, because we live here at 52 degrees latitude, we will never have the sun completely above us, so that's not really a problem. And because this linear actuator creates an extra speed reduction, the vertical movement is of course very slow, but it also makes it very strong. But it doesn't need to be fast, so that's okay. The horizontal movement is powered by this motor through this belt, This is the bicycle axle. I just coated this with a little bit of polyurethane glue to make it less slippery. And I also coated this belt. And I will later show you how to make a belt like this. This piece is just two bearings with a piece of round steel to which I grinded a square, same way as with the linear actuator. These rubber bands put the belt under tension so it won't slip. And I actually wish I used a better quality wood because you can see here that it very easily delaminates. But uh, it was a very cheap kind. And I actually wish I had spent a little bit more money. You can see it has a little bit of movement. So if I push at this, and this will move very easily because it will slip. And if I let it go, then it's stuck. I use this Simpson Superfix 009 for gluing all the woodwork together to make the construction more sturdy and I also used it for coating the bicycle axle and the belt. I will now explain how to make a belt and I used this kind of strap. So I've cut off a piece, put it in my vise. By the way, this is not the one from Miami, so don't worry. So now let's heat it up with the hot air gun. So now it's firmly welded together. Then you apply a bit of glue, like so. Let's put something underneath it before I make a mess of my workbench. Just apply a thin coat, like this. And when it's dried out it feels a little bit rubbery and therefore will have a lot of grip, especially on the on a small axle because that one isn't coated at all and of course the bicycle axle is coated so this way it has enough grip in both circumstances. I've made this indicator to see how accurate it is. You see it creates a little dot and therefore I can see if it's a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right or up or down. So just a visual measurement device. Because the motors need to run a little longer now to adjust the position, they of course consume more electricity and therefore there will be generated more heat by these transistors. So I added this heat sink and these strips are attached to this heat sink by silicone because silicone conducts heat very well. This cools it all quite nicely. I very much like to do a full day test run, but unfortunately winter is coming, so there is not a lot of sun these days. 
I'm going to convert this satellite dish into a parabolic mirror to heat up all kind of stuff and to do all kind of experiments with solar energy, like generating steam and power my steam engine. Okay, that's it everyone. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram and see you next time. So, as you can see, whining helps because it's sunny again.